Hi thinkers, welcome to the data structures in Java course on ThinkX Academy. So uh, in this tutorial, we're going to start with the graph data structure. Graph is, uh, is a very important data structure and we're going to implement this whole data structure and various algorithms in Java. So uh, we're going to study some of the very interesting algorithms that are widely used in um, in computer science and uh, in coding interviews also there are a lot of questions that are asked on graph data structure and uh, basically in this tutorial i'll give you a basic introduction and uh, basic uh, things i will tell you what to expect from this whole module and what we are going to cover in the whole module so uh, let's get started right so first of all uh, i'm going to start with what exactly is a graph data structure but there are two important things um, which is uh, the ways to represent uh, a graph data structure so the first way uh, is known as adjacency list so here you can see that i've written adjacency list and um, this is basically a linked list representation of graph data structure and the second representation is a 2d um, two-dimensional array which is which we call as uh, adjacency matrix right so there are two ways to implement graph data structure there is one more way which we can use a uh, dictionary uh, we can use a dictionary to uh, implement graph data structure and um, in java we call that actually a hash map right so we can use a hash map to implement uh, this uh, graph data structure as well so uh, let, let's start with what exactly is a graph data structure and uh, what are the advantages of it right so first things first every data structure contains some data right so uh, i'm going to draw some nodes here and i'm going to say that okay this is one this is two this is node three and this is node four right so i have these four nodes and uh, the choice uh, of naming can be anything like a b c d but i'm using numbers one two three four uh, it's better if you use a b c d right so i have these four nodes and uh, what i can do is i can actually connect these nodes so uh, the thing that we need to understand here is that every data structure is unique because of its uh, its representation for example if i uh, if i have a linked list i know that its representation would be something like this and the reason why we have this type of representation is because of some uh, functionalities and some advantages that this data structure gives me right uh, similarly if i have a binary tree i will have something like this one two three and let's say four goes here and similarly for different data structure like stack i will have a different implementation right so for different different data structures we have the same data data is same we can see one two three four but representation matters and the reason why graph is a bit complex uh, than other data structures is that it does not uh, actually impose any particular rules on how to represent the data structure right so you, what you can do is you can actually like connect any of these uh, nodes in whatever way you want right so you can just connect one with two um, then you can connect uh, one with three also then you can connect one with four also right this is a valid uh, graph also and you can see that uh, even a linked list is a type of a graph data structure so uh, i can connect two with three also then i can connect four and three also so i can connect as many as i want right so this is a graph data structure now there are two important terms that you will be using when representing graph first of all these nodes are not no more nodes we call them nodes in binary trees and linked list here we call these nodes as vertices right so this is essentially a vertex right so this is a vertex so the set of vertices that i have in here is one two three and four right so this is a vertex that i have or the set of vertices so every graph data structure contains set of vertices, which is the data. And the second thing that it contains is the edges, right? So I'm going to write here edges. So you can see one and two are connected. So I have one edge, which is one comma two. Then one and three is connected. I have another edge, one comma three. And similarly, I have one more edge, which is one four. And finally, we have two, three, right? So how many uh, edges do we have in this graph? Uh, we have four edges, right? Uh, so this is the uh, representation of graph data structure. A graph contains sets of vertices and edges. Now, what makes uh, this data structure more fascinating is that these edges right over here, which is connecting the vertices, can also have some weights, right? So one and two is connected. So we can say that one and two are actually uh, some different locations. And let's say I want to specify the distance between this location as, uh, let's say, five meters, right? So I will just write that this is five. Um, uh, I'm just writing the unit, right? So let's say two and three is connected with a distance of 10 
and similarly uh, let's say 10 kilometers and here 1 and 3 is connected with let's say 15 kilometers and similarly let's say 1 and 4 is connected with 9 kilometers so uh, graph data structure is unique in this way only linked list in linked list you can see uh, we these connections they do not have any weights right uh, this just means that one and two are connected but it does not specify uh, anything like what is the distance between them or there can be numerous applications of this right similarly binary tree also does not represent that but a graph data structure is unique it represents the weight right so what i can do is i can also specify that uh, we have another thing which is weights in this graph so one and two is connected right so i can just say one and two is connected and the weight is five right and similarly i can just add one more information here i'm just adding one more information which is the weight right so one and three is connected and the weight is 15 and so on right so this is a very important uh, thing about graph data structure uh, there are different algorithms that you will use to uh, actually um, find the shortest path between two locations and something like that so there, there are algorithms like jigsaw's algorithm bellman ford find union topological sort we're going to cover all of them in this uh, module not in this tutorial but yes in the upcoming videos it will uh, be covered so make sure to subscribe our channel and also um, share it with others also so that they can also learn this right um, okay so now let's move on to the next thing which is uh, so this type of graph which has weighted graph uh, sorry which has weight is known as a weighted graph right so i'm going to say that this is essentially a weighted graph all right so there is one more interesting thing about graph that you can see that from from one and two right here i have one here i have two and one and two are connected right one is connected to two it means um, it just means that they, they are related to each other right they are just connected it does not specify anything like uh, I can just go only from one to two, right? So the interesting thing about graph is that it also specifies directions, right? So here you can see in um, binary tree, we are we have only one specific direction, which is we first go to parent, then we go to child. Here we have only one direction in linked list, we go from one node to the next node like this, right? But here in graph data structure, we have no actual constraint. So we can have directions like this. So I can say that one is connected to two and we can only go from one to two, right? So I have now actually converted it into an arrow, right? So one is connected to two, such that I can just go from one to two, okay? So similarly, I can have more uh, arrows and directions like this, and like this. So you can see I have these directions, which is uh, another useful information that we have added. And such a type of graph is known as a directed graph. Right, so such type of a graph is a directed graph, and yes, it has a lot of applications also uh, because uh, there are like um, uh, situations when we are actually applying the constraint that you can only go from one to two and not from two to one, right? So you can go from one to two because we have this arrow, but going the other way around is not possible, right? Um, so that this is one uh, more important thing. Now let's move on uh, to another important step or another important thing. Uh, so uh, let's move on to the uh, first question is how will I represent this type of data structure? Uh, first of all, it, it's complex, right? You can see uh, from this itself, um, since we do not have any certain rules and um, this will make traversal insertion and a lot of things difficult, right? So just think about how will you traverse uh, such type of data structure, right? Uh, how will you go from, let's say I, I want to start from one, uh, this data structure has no end, right? So a binary tree uh, ends at the uh, children with ha which has null. So leaves at the leaves, this traversal will end. Similarly in a linked list, it will end when I meet null. So in a graph data structure, I start from one and uh, let's say I want to visit all the nodes, right? So that is the condition. So if I want to do traversal, it becomes complex in case of a uh, graph data structure and to do traversal there are actually two important algorithms which is the uh, breadth first so i'm going to write here the first algorithm is the breadth first traversal or breadth first search and the second algorithm is the depth first search two very important algorithms. You will be using it a lot when you're dealing with uh, 
graphite extraction and both of these has advantages and disadvantages and these will be covered in this module in detail so i, I will create separate videos on them uh, with advantages disadvantages so basically why i'm telling you this is that um, i always say that graph is the king of all data structures if you master this graph data structure you are also mastering other data structures as well so for example this breadth first search is implemented using q data structure depth first search traversal is implemented using a stack data structure right so and you can see we have already marked here linked list and arrays also right so in order to implement a uh, in order to just master graph data structure, you need to have knowledge of all of these data structures like queues, stacks, linked list arrays. And we will also study some very important algorithms like uh, we have the famous Jigstra's shortest path algorithm. So I'll write here, we have Jigstra's algorithm, which is the shortest path algorithm. And this algorithm makes use of heaps. So you will also apply your knowledge of heap data structure, right? So Essentially, there are so many other algorithms. One of them, which is another interesting algorithm and is also a traversal algorithm is the uh, topological sorting, right? So it is not actual sorting. It's um, it's a basic, basically it's a traversal technique, right? It's not, uh, we are going to sort the integers, right? It's not a sorting algorithm as per se. Then we have one more important algorithm, which is find union. And similarly, we have another algorithms like cross calls and prims, right? Spanning trees and a lot of algorithms are there and we will cover this, all of these in this module, right? So this is one uh, thing and uh, don't get overwhelmed by the um, by this knowledge. Uh, I will, uh, we will learn about all of these things. So if you do not understand at this point, uh, you can just ignore this part, right? Uh, just I was giving an idea of what this actually is. So. We'll cover all this, right? Now let's move on to uh, another important thing, uh, which is uh, the representation. How am I going to represent this graph data structure in code, right? So let's first take a look at uh, linked list, right? So let's first take a look at the linked list representation of graph. So I'm just going to write here, linked list representation of graph. Right, so let's see how we can actually create uh, this same graph, right? We're going to choose the same example. We're going to choose this example and we're going to implement it using a linked list, right? So it's interesting to uh, create this. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to first create um, an array here. So uh, since we have only four uh, nodes, sorry, four vertices, because we're considering graphs, so which starts from uh, one, two, three, four, like this, right? So let's say that the index of this array starts from zero, one, two, and three, right? So in order to represent a graph with four vertices, I need a uh, just an array of uh, four elements, right? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just simply going to divide this into four parts. Okay, so we have these four parts now. And now what I'm going to do is each of these places represent, uh, or you can say each of this index position represent the vertex we are dealing with, right? So zeroth position is representing our vertex zero, right? So we have vertex one, two, three, four. So vertex zero, or sorry, the index zero represents the vertex one, right? Or you can say vertex A, B, C, D, anything, right? So I'm going to redraw the example here by using A, B, C, D instead of using integers, right? It's a good practice because um, this will avoid the confusion, right? So A and B connect is connected, B, C and A, D and A, C is connected. So let's say that the zeroth position of this array right we have this array represents node a this will represent this first position will represent b right and this position will represent c and the last one will represent d right now uh, since we are using linked list what we are going to do is at each position i'm going to create a linked list and how i'm going to do that i will create an empty linked list by just creating a head pointer and i will store it at these positions right so at all of these position, I have a head pointer to a different linked list, right? Okay, so I have now a head pointer and 
this is actually initially pointing to null so all of these are initially pointing to null right so now what i want is uh, a is connected to b right so uh, if a is connected to b i just what i can just do is i can just create a node and i can say that a is connected to b like this right so since we are dealing with a now right so this is uh, what we are dealing with a so a is connected with b so a we will take a look at the index 0 at index 0 we connected with b a is also connected with c you can see here right this edge right here so i will say that okay a is also connected to c and a is also connected to d and then we have null right so this is the linked list representation of this graph right we are using uh, Essentially, we are using linked list because linked list is actually uh, representing the, you can say the adjacent nodes or the neighbors of this node A, right? So here you can see that B, uh, C, and D, right? All of these are adjacent nodes of A, right? So this is the linked list that we have. So what I can do is if I ever I want to find out what are the neighbors of A, I can just go to the position zero and I can traverse to this whole linked list right next moving to b we know b is connected to a so i will again write this okay b is connected to a b is also connected to c and null similarly c is also connected to a and c is connected to b null and finally we have d which is connected to only a right so this is a linked list representation of this graph and i hope that this uh, you have understood this part uh, it's a bit tricky i know it's a bit complex you know you're creating an array and linked list merging two different concepts so um, when you will practice you will do some practice questions that uh, in this module you will be uh, get used to this right so now let's take a look at what are the advantages and disadvantages of this right so let's first take a look at advantages advantage is that it is space optimized right space optimized means that we are not using any additional space to uh, to represent something right the all right so uh, now let's move on to the disadvantages now so uh, can you think of any uh, you can pause this video and think about what is the disadvantage at this point uh, so the first disadvantage is that uh, in order to find uh, whether let's say we have a and we have c right let's pick any two nodes so i'm actually picking up a and i'm picking up c so i want to know whether a and c is connected or not right i just want to find that out that whether a and c is connected so i'm going to write here in disadvantages i want to check whether a and c are connected a and c is connected or maybe they have an edge or not right one and the same thing now the question is why do we why are we doing this the reason behind this is that in various algorithms you will be checking whether two nodes are neighbors of each other or adjacent to each other so this is something which will be a disadvantage if you are using a linked list to represent graph right uh, the reason being that if i want to do that i will first have to go to the uh, since we want to know a and c are connected i will first have to go to a and the way to do is to go to the zeroth position and then i have to traverse along this linked list to get to c to find out and we will have to go till the end to see uh, whether a and c is connected so the time complexity in worst case right so i'm going to write here that this is the worst case scenario um this will be a big off in time complexity right so this is a disadvantage and now uh, we are going to move on to the next one right so which is the arrays representation so again we have the same graph and now i'm going to uh, create an array so since we have four nodes right i will create an array to the array of size uh, 4 by 4 right so 4 by 4 means uh, we are actually saying v cross uh, v multiplied by v or v square uh, which is actually v represents vertices here right so if a graph has four vertices i will have to uh, create an array of uh, this size right so it will be essentially 4 and 4 right or we can just say array v and v 
this is how I will create a two dimensional array. Right, so now let's uh, just do the partitioning work. And here I'm going to create just four partitions. So basically, uh, each partition, uh, uh, there, there will be 16 cells inside of this 2D array. So four partition column wise and four partitions row wise, right? So each and every cell is actually representing something here. Now let's just create the index positions starting from zero since it is an array, right? Zero, one, two, three. So the first thing is when we create an array, the first step, so we are creating a graph essentially, and this is adjacency JCNC matrix representation of graph. So I'm going to write here that this is essentially a adjacency JCNC matrix, right? So the first step is to create this array. Second step is to mark all the positions or all the cells in this as zero. Right, all of them should be zero. Right, so we have uh, this graph here A, B, C, and D. And this is something which we have in our example. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to pick up one edge and we're going to represent it in this 2D array, right? So let's pick up A, right? I will pick up A. Let's say that A is actually representing uh, index position zero, right? So you can see that A is connected to B, right? And let's say B represents one, C represents two, and D represents three, right? So I'm actually saying this because uh, we are now using A, B, C, D. So A is referring to the index position zero since uh, indexes cannot be characters. They will have to be integers, right? So I want to say that zero and one is connected, right? So we have a connection between zero and one. So zero is connected to one. So I'm going to start from here, right? So each and every row will represent the vertex, right? And now let's start with zero. Zero is representing A, one is representing B, two is representing C, and similarly we have D here. And same is the case with this position, right? So I want to check whether A is connected with B, right? So what I'm going to simply do here is instead of zero, Right. Instead of making this cell zero, I will make it as one. Right. So what this means is that zero and one is connected. Right. So zero, one, one means it is connected. Zero means there is no connection. Right. Then zero and two is also connected. So again, I'm going to remove this. Zero and two is connected, and zero and three is also connected. So both of them will be one. Okay, so let's move on to B, right? B is one, uh, B is connected to uh, A, which is zero, right? So B is connected to this, and B is also connected to two, and B is connected to, no, B is not connected to D. So here, what I'm going to do is, I will just write one here, right? So B has two edges. Now let's move on to C, right? C has, uh, C is connected to uh, A and B, right? So I'll write one and one here. And similarly, D is connected to only A. So what I'm going to do here is just this one is going to become one. Now this 2D array here is actually a representation of this graph G, right? So this is basically a two dimensional array and the way we are drawing out information is by using uh, each cell, right? What is the value of this cell? So if the value of cell is one, it means we have an edge from zero to one. If it is zero, it means that we do not have an edge from them, right? So uh, what happened if uh, I introduce weights, right? I have already told you that graph can be a weighted graph also. How will I uh, add that information in both of these representation, right? So in Linux, we know it's easy. We, instead of just creating this node B, I can uh, say that the node will not only have data, but it will also have weight. So let's say uh, A is connected with B, right? A is connected with B and what is the weight? Uh, weight is five, right? So I'm going to say that the weight is five, something like this. And similarly, A is connected to C, what will be the weight? weight will be 10 
right and so on right we can do that very easily uh, in linked list how can we do that in here in here also it's easy uh, instead of making it one we can actually assign the values right so let's uh, let me first write out these values here so a b is connected 5 10 15 and 9 and let's actually write this here so instead of using one we are going to use the actual weight right so here i'm going to remove this so zero and one is connected uh, what is the weight uh, a and b is connected weight is five right so i'm going to write five here and similarly five here similarly uh, zero and two which is uh, a and c is connected what what is the weight 15 right uh, similarly uh, we have uh, others also and we can also change them right instead of using one we can just use the actual distances uh, you can do it yourself right so uh, let's move on to important thing which is what is the advantages like what is the advantage of using it over linked list so let's pick up the disadvantage of linked list right disadvantage of linked list is if i want to make a check whether a and c is connected it will take big off and time because i need to traverse through the whole linked list uh, in this case, if I want to find out whether A and C is connected or whether zero and two is connected, what I can just do is I can just simply check whether the value of the cell at zero comma two position is equal to equal to zero or not, right? So if it is equal to zero, it means that they both are not connected, right? And if I want to check whether they are connected, I can just say not equal to zero, right? So how much time will it take for me to do this check big o of one right because in array we have this advantage that uh, we can access any index in just big o of one time right so access time is faster in arrays uh, what is the disadvantage so interesting thing here is that the advantage of linked list becomes disadvantage here right so space is not optimized in case of the uh, in case when we are using arrays right so space is not optimized all right so here you can see uh, there are a bunch of zeros here right you can see this is a zero 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 right so you can see there are so many uh, cells and these cells actually occupy memory right they actually consume memory space so these are actually occupying memory and they are not contributing to the data structure right so this is a huge wastage of memory Right, so I will write here that this is wastage of uh, memory, which is RAM. So uh, space is not optimized. So it is a wastage of space. And uh, in case when we have very less number of edges, you will see a lot of zeros, right? So when you have a lot of zeros uh, or uh, inside of this, we call such type of a matrix as a sparse matrix. Right? Just adding to your information because you will see this in a lot of coding interviews as well. Uh, what is a sparse matrix so a sparse matrix is basically a matrix uh, which has more zeros in it right so this, these are actually wastage of space that's why it is sparse right so uh, this is how we can actually create a graph using uh, uh, adjacency matrix and adjacency list and we will study uh, them in detail in the next tutorial uh, we will implement a linked list representation of graph in java so we will create a program where i will uh, use a uh, same example or maybe a different one and uh, i will implement it in java right so that's all for this tutorial thanks for watching